What's up, Mavletic lovers and listeners, and welcome back to Maverick Postgame. We've got another full show for you today as Mesa Softball makes a turnaround after a defeat to demolish in their second game. And men's lacrosse has an amazing win. Plus, an amazing performance from our beach volleyball team. And the women's lacrosse obtain an amazing victory after a close game. All of that and so much more as we move ahead into this recap-packed episode of Maverick Postgame. So with that being said, I'm your host, Grace Metcalf. And I'm Maddie Warren. Let's get into all the game-breaking stats, off-the-wall wins, heartbreaking losses, and in-depth analysis of our CMU athletics. Roll it! everyone and once again I am Maddie Warren and I am Grace Metcalf. Let's hop right in and take a look at all the Mavtastic action that took place this week here at CMU. This past Sunday the Colorado Mesa softball team competed in an RMAC doubleheader against Regis University. After losing a close game in the first game they ended up coming back from a rare defeat to claim their 25th win of the season with a dominating win in their second game with a 9-1 victory. The Rangers had defeated the Mavericks 6-5 in the first game. The Mavs also saw the end of their 17th game home winning streak, but came with their win ending the weekend with three victories to one. In the game, the Mavericks to a 2-0 lead in the bottom of the second as Sarah Jorson hit a leadoff homer to begin the frame. Before Ashley Bradford drove Nicole Christensen, home with a sacrifice fly later in the inning. Meanwhile, Maverick pitcher Paige Adair recorded five of her six strikeouts in the first two innings. The Mavericks then let a runner on the base in the third, but retired the Rangers in, or in order in the fourth. They then increased the lead to 5-0 in the fourth as Lauren Wedman hit a two-out RBI double to score. Ileana Mendoza and Wedman then both scored in an Arietta RBI single down the left field line, promoting a Ranger pitching change. Leading 5-1 going to the bottom of the sixth, the Mavs then put the finishing touches on the victory as Bradford hit a one-out home run before Arietta doubled Wedman home to make the score 7-1. Disler then drove Arietta home with a single to make it 8-1. to one. Pinch runner Ava Fugate then moved to second on, on Brandy Holler walk before another pitching change that did not work out as Jorison delivered her second RBI of the game with a single up the middle that allowed Fugate to round the third and score, ending the game with their 9-1 victory. As a team, the Mavericks dominated a number of hits with 11 to the Rangers 4, as well as having 9 RBIs to the Mavericks 0. The Mavs also dominated in stolen bases with their 3 to the Rangers 1. The Rangers had 8 strikeouts when the Mavs only had 1. The Mavericks are now 25-5 overall and 17-1 in RMAC play, while the Rangers finished the weekend with a 21-14 overall and 15-5 RMAC record. This past Friday, the men's lacrosse team had an incredible 25-9 win over the winningless uh, Flagler College. 17 different Mavericks were credited with goal and 8 of the Mavericks uh, goal scorers had 2 goal efforts as the Mavericks scored 8 goals apiece in the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th quarter after a slow start. Their 25 goals are a season high and are tied for the ninth most in a single game in the program's history. One of the eight Mavericks with two goals. Uh, freshman JJ Brummett also had three assists to finish the game, uh, high five points. His older brother Jake also scored and went 15 for 17 at the face off mark to lead off the Mavs in a 26 10 advantage uh, in the faceoff. Jake Bremmett uh, and Dylan Chekitz, uh, who were 8 for 15 on draws, also had six ground hauls uh, each. Drew Eckelman had seven as the Mavericks scooped up 51 ground balls, 21 more than the, fifth, than the Saints. 
as the Mavericks trailed uh, two to zero late in the first quarter before Ethan Point scored to put the Mavs on the board with 10 seconds to go in the opening frame. The Mavs then trailed three to two with six minutes to go in the second quarter, but railed for seven goals in the finals, the final minutes of the half to seize a nine to three halftime lead. Later, they scored four goals in two minutes worth of action late in the third build, a 17 to six lead. Flagler then cut the gap to the 18 to nine before the Mavericks went on a seven to zero score run over just more than six minutes to the completing score. Saturday presented two rare opportunities for the Colorado Mesa Beach Volleyball team, playing against fellow Division II opponents in Concordia, Irvine, and Cal State, LA. The Mavericks would split on the day, finishing the road trip with a 2-2 record. In the first match against the Eagles of CUI, Jessa Megan Hart and Jada Hall battled it out on the court, taking the first set before the Eagles surged back to force a deciding set. The decision was a no-brainer as they dominated for a 15-4 victory and a team point. They finished 2-0 on the day with close sets on the other four courts continuing towards the team score. Unable to secure the duel, the final 4-1 score in favor of CUI. It was a different outcome in the second match of the day against the Golden Eagles. Uh, the Golden Eagles took the top flight in a touch battle, their only point of the duel. In the exhibition sets, the Mavs performed wonderfully. Haley Peters and Savannah Ott went 2-0 on the day. Ashton Reese and Sydney Leffler going 1-1. One one. Rianne Brown and Paige Guatley also picked up a win in their complete match, splitting another game with no winner determined due to time. Last Thursday, the Colorado Mesa women's lacrosse team closed out in their time uh, in their time in Florida with a big time win over Saints Leo, taking a 13 to 12 overtime victory over the 23rd ranked Lions. Uh, through the Mavs claimed, though the Mavs claimed the last goal, it was the Lions who drew blood first, taking a two to zero lead. CMU then railed off three goals to take over the lead. Going on to the second, uh, the Lions outscored the Mavs two to four to two on the way to an eight to six edge going on to the break. Uh, Brianna Anderson got things going in the third, opening up a four to one score effort in favor of the Mavs and the 10 to nine lead with one period remaining. With under 30 seconds left to play, St. Leo's Maria Paloma scored the team's 12th goal and the late lead. Going into overtime, uh, field the pass, fielding the pass from Anderson Taylor Jakeman uh, dodged around a defender setting up one on one, placing it past the goalie to obtain the win. Now that we have recapped some of the games, it's time to announce our Maverick of the Week. Our Maverick of the Week goes to James Steinke. James was named as the Offensive Player of the Week for the second consecutive week and third time this season. He scored five goals and had four assists in the Mavericks games at Florida Tech and Flagler last week. James has now scored in all nine games this season and 10 consecutive games dating back to last year. He leads the RMAC with 31 offensive points this season and is second in both goals and assists. Congratulations, James, for your outstanding performance. You are Maverick of the Week. We are now at the end of our show and it is time for our closing statements. My closing thought is on how excited I am to see women's soccer play. They just released their spring season schedule and I can't wait to see how well they will play. That is exciting. My closing thought is how unfortunate it was that all the softball team lost their winning streak by one point. I'm just glad they were able to come back around and destroy them in the second game and hopefully they will continue through their season with more wins. Absolutely. Now that we have wrapped up all the action from this week and given our closing thoughts, 
It is time to close the show. Thank you everyone so much for joining us this week on Maverick Postgame. I've been your host, Grace Metcalf. And I've been Maddie Warren. We'll catch you next week on an all new recap packed episode of Maverick Postgame. Stay safe Mavs, study hard, go to a game or two, and of course, have yourselves a Mason amazing day.